the thankful leper, or one out of ten. I let you remain seated while we prayed because I would like for you to stand now in honor of the reading of God's word. We're going to read the first three verses from Psalm 95 from the New King James. And I'd like for us, because they're familiar and they're only three verses, I would like for us to read these aloud together. So please read from the version on the screen. So we'll all stay together. This is the New King James. Are you ready? Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In that passage I've used as introduction, to this message from Psalm 95, I want to call your attention to this phrase from verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And I want to remind you of the familiar two verses we began the service with from Psalm 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving in verse 4 and then in verse 5. Be thankful to him. I want to say right up front that a key to staying revived, and I believe many of us are revived and this church is revived, that a key to staying revived, a key to moving forward in God, a key to staying in the center of his will and living in his provision is living and loving out of a thankful heart. When I was growing up, I got called a lot of names. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood, and some of them were pretty bad names. Uh, The one I think that hurt the worst was a long, long, long name. It was fatty, fatty, two by four. Couldn't get through the bathroom door. None of you called that, and I hope none of you called anybody else that. And then when I got to high school, when I was in the eighth grade, one of my teachers stuck me with a nickname that stayed with me for the next five years, and I still, every now and then, will get an email from someone in high school, and they'll call me that name, and it was a hurtful name. Many of the teachers called me that before I graduated. But I think the most hurtful thing I've ever been called was more than 30 years ago when a friend of mine called me an ingrate. You know what an ingrate is? Somebody who's not thankful. I would hate for the Lord to look down on me as a Christian and call me ungrateful, to see me as a Christian ingrate. You see, a grateful, thankful Christian does not look continually on the lack in his life or her life, does not look continually at the problem does not stare always at the prayer that has yet to be answered. A grateful, thankful Christian keeps what the Lord has already done for you ever before your eyes. No one has to remind them to sit down, take a few minutes, and sing, count your blessings. Count them one by one. Don't you want to sit somebody down sometime and just sing that to them? Hand them a piece of paper and a pencil and say, would you just write down some of the things that God has already done for you? Count your blessings. List them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. A grateful Christian lives each day with the keen awareness of answered prayer 
Every answered prayer, you remember. Every time God's healed you, you recall it. Every loved one that he has saved, you continue to be thankful for. They live with the cross of Christ ever before their eyes, remembering that Jesus died to save them when they could not save themselves, when they were still helpless, hopeless, and hapless sinners. 